everyone, and welcome to the long-awaited Star Wars movie. I mean, ranking every Star Wars movie. I'm pretty sure that's what you said here. Now, if you don't know, this video has been taking a while. I had to, like, rewrite scripts. I, I had to write scripts, editing, you know, all this stuff. But don't worry, though. The video is out now, and let's get to it. So first up, I just want to get something from a hot. I just want to get something with a good start. 50. How about this? If this video gets 50 likes, now I can't believe I'm doing this, but I will watch The Mandalorian and make a video about it. I haven't watched any of the Star Wars series yet, so let me know if you want to watch this ma watch the Mandalorian and make a video about it. Okay, okay, yeah. Now I'm gonna go over some rules first. Rule number one: I will not be counting any shows and specials for this, this video. Rule number two: I'm not counting Lego Star Wars stuff. Those are movies. Those are shorts. And this is just a mention. Next one is called a mention. I decided to use my mic for this video, and you know that, like, mic? Okay, hold on. Usually when I record my videos, I usually press G and, win and Windows. It pulls up the little screen tab where I usually record my gaming videos. I decided to use the little mic icon for this one, but it was a little, it was a little, the mic quality was a little trash. So I decided, so I decided, so I decided I was halfway there, I decided to use, so I was on I was on Attack of the Clones, and I started to use, so I tried to test on my gamer headphones if the mic quality is good. So, so, so I was on Attack of the Clones. You might, you, you might, you might hear my mic a lot, my, my trash until Attack of the Clones. Now on to the video. Woo! Star Wars A New Hope. Ah, yes. The very first original Star Wars movie all the way back in 1977. I gotta say, this feel like... I gotta say, I got to watching this feel like a witnessing a piece of movie history, man. Movie that's so old and yet so good even by today's standards. So the movie starts and we see a ship be by a test star and Princess Leia be captured by Darth Vader. Then C-3PO and R2-D2 leaving... Let me use an escape pod and crash around Tatooine, and eventually being bought out by the Luke Skywalker. Next is Luke being beaten up by a bunch of sad people, and this is where we meet the one and only Obi Wan Kenobi. I mean, Ben Kenobi. And with some swift and kiss fisting, Luke joins Obi Wan to try to take down the Empire. So they travel to downtown where we meet Han Solo and Chewbacca. And aboard the Millennium Falcon, they get captured by the Death Star. Luke and Han rest in Leia. Obi Wan sacrifice helps to save Luke in the goofy lightsaber fight. Then the rebels come back and blow up the entire Death, blow the Death Star because why not? So yeah, for the first Star Wars movie ever, it's pretty dang good. And the film was made in 1977. It was actually pretty pop broken. George Lucas kind of went crazy with these visual effects. So to give this movie credit for starting a China franchise, it's going S tier. No questions answered. The Empire The Empire Strikes Back is a gr is a great. This movie might possibly be, that I say, the peak of Star Wars. It's alright prequels, I still love it though. Empire was just a compelling sequel to the first Star Wars movie and first introduced and developed all of these characters. And so we practically carried the original trilogy, same way Revenge of the Sith carries the prequel. So we remember stars in the Ice Planet called Hoth, where Luke gets captured by Wampa, managed to escape, and then against his will gets stuck to the side of the tongue tongue. Honestly, not the best at start of any Star Wars movie, but it gets better from, it gets better. Luke then meets the Force Ghost of Obi Wan, pretty much telling him to find Master Yoda for his Jedi training. This is where we meet Yoda in the swamp for the first time, and the rest of the gang heads to Cloud City to meet this guy called Lando Calrissian, the Hunter of the Emperor. But guess what? It's a trap! Han Solo also gets frozen in carbonite because why not? I guess. Luke shows up pretty late to the party and still with Darth Vader. We're unsurprisingly, goes horribly wrong. And man, this this where Vader this where Vader gives his grand reel to Luke is still. It's still so, it's still so good to this day. I can only imagine how mortified the audience were back in 1980 watching this scene. So yeah, so yeah. After Luke finds out that Vader was his father, he pretty much contented underscore 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 underscore, but then gets saved by the but skip half Falcons. So yeah, so the Empire Strikes Back is all around a good great movie in my opinion it is definitely the strongest of the original trilogy. This is also this is also probably no surprise. I mean not to mention this film was even directed by Lucas and it was garbage man. Crusher definitely W upped everything that you hope about to offer this movie. This film gave us great characters, memorable moments, and if you really think about it, it started the waves of Star Wars sequels and other movies. So therefore it's only fitting 
This movie gets S tier. Just Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Just like A New Hope and then the Fire Strikes Back, this was a blast to watch. This movie has an amazing and good trilogy, and for good reasons. So, the Return of the Jedi starts strong with Leia, a reason Carbonite for Han Solo, but Wong wants to jump it up, and then Kai and Splave in a space something. But then Luke shows up and saves the whole gang. Also, Boba Fett died in the Sunlight Pit. At least I think that. At least I. <coughs> Sorry, hold on. <coughs> Sorry. After this story continues, where Lou going to visit Yoda, and basically, and him basically confirming that Darwin and Whitley's boy. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> was indeed as far and dies and dying shortly after. So the gang goes to the moon called Endor, populated by essentially teddy bears, who just make stakes pre see people yells and God for some reason. So the point of them going to Endor is that the gang fought the rebels, and there's a shield generator that's shielding the Death Star, too. So the gang has to shut off the shield generator and the rebels blow off the Death Star 2. Keep in mind, this is the Death Star 2. The Death Star Star already blew up in the last movie. So this is the Death Star 2. They're building another one. After some fighting, Luke just surrenders himself to Darth Vader trying to convince him back to the turn him back to the light side. This doesn't really look on Vader, so he brings Luke to Palpatine, who starts torturing him in force lightning. This is when Vader really Really comes to a senses and decides to finally turn to life for a Palpatine off of Ed and killing him. For any of you wondering, yes, Palpatine's in dead, you better not look any further into it. Then Vader dies and looks are finally we're doing his death in arcs, Death Star blows up, and the movie ends. Honestly, my summary movie not do it justice. This one is amazing, a high mecha one as well. S tier. Ladies and Jedi's, we've officially made the prequel era of Star Wars. Thank God for the prequels, man. Anyways, the Phantom Menace was okay. Coming out to watch Return of the Jedi, this wasn't just a downgrade in every side except for the final duel. But I'll get back to that. So the Phantom Menace starts with a usual tile crawl, indicating they are, um, taxation systems in this speed. Taxis. The Obi Wan and Qui Gon and Jenna send some spaceship to try to fix it, but then get ratted out by the Jedi Knights and make him flee the scene. And my God. I get to tell it felt like it's watching man. I like to sometimes jump movies just struck straight into action. I like that. Anyways, in the next scene is where Qui Gon Jinn is in who knows where doing who knows when and meets Jar Jar Binks. Who is this weird who is this weird making sound relief comment alien guy? Surprisingly after watching this movie all my life, it's only after I now that I realize, hold on a second. Is Jar Jar a race? <laughs> okay, hold on. Anyway, so the ship engine breaks would lead the entire gang to Tatooine, winning my young Anakin Skywalker. Not as much of a fortunate place to grow up on. <laughs> Qui-Gon senses, Qui senses that Anakin is indeed the cho chosen one. And he bets his entire... And and he bets his entire ship and Anakin's freedom on the pod race. Which he wins, confirms Anakin is the chosen one. And as for the rest of the movie, I kind of forgot the rest of the movie. But not the end, no. I'm gonna talk about the end right now. After the wars raged, but more wars raged between the battle droids and Jar Jar Binks people, Maul confronts Obi Wan and Qui Gon, and this is where we get one of the greatest lightsaber fights in the entire series, guys. And let me glaze this fight scene real quick for a minute. Imagine watching this movie coming out, seeing Return of the Jedi, and see Maul open not one, but two lightsabers. Not to mention the choreography was a massive step up in the original trilogy. And the soundtrack, man, John Williams carried this movie so hard. Anyways, I'm sure you guys all know what happens next. Qui-Gon dies, Obi-Wan's force jump slices Maul, and then Obi-Wan vows to Dre Anakin. Yeah, honestly, this movie was worse than I remember it being. The plot was quite clear, and the characters were more, more boring. Hold on, the characters were boring, I remember. And I don't know all the prequels, this is probably the worst one. C tier. Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones was so slightly an improvement to the Phantom Menace. It's only after I watch after I watch these prequel movies that it actually hits me. I'm like, wait a second. These movies are half good. Let's start with the plot. So the first act starts movie, first movie starts around Padme, going around building an army of a separatist movement of sorts. I also know God how I know I didn't look stuff on the Wikipedia. But it's the apparent reason of why Palpatine as to why Palpatine keeps trying to assassinate Padme. But the problem here lies with if Palpatine ever succeeded killing Padme in the first place, 
that when Anakin ever actually turns to the dark side, it's probably makes zero sense, man. I'm sorry, Lucas. So, so why does Obi Wan and Anakin are tasked to protect Padme? Anakin reveals his love of Padme for a very long time, and then Padme almost gets assassinated again by a bounty hunter. At this point, Anakin and Obi Wan slip split ways from. We're, tra we're tracking down Gago Fett as a bounty hunter and while also the coming to clone army. And I can and Padme, I can and Padme ha having a love story with the greatest dialogue I've ever seen. After that, that Anakin has nightmares of his mother, so they go back to Tatooine to save her, but she dies. And so we, he goes on a murderous rampage, killing not just the men, but the women. And the children, too. Only for the lights, it's a pretty much a turning point in the story, and it's mostly as cute well. Moving forward, Obi Wan, Anakin, and Padme all get captured by the other planet where the bad guys are hiding, uh, led by da Count Dooku. But then the Jedi arrive and resolve the issues with peace. Obi Wan and Anakin then face off against Count Dooku before getting utterly destroyed, leading to him escaping. Anakin marries Padme, and the end. All Attack on Clones was a, with, a, with a okay plot. Little niche writing, and also unexplained answer. When did R2 D2 get a jetpack? Well, at least it could have been worse. Beats here. Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith is a movie with a tragic, yet well made story buried under bloated seas. There, I said it. Listen, I absolutely adored this movie, but it still has its flaws. Let's start off with the plot. So the movie starts at Dire Straits, the actual Obi Wan and Anakin. Saving chance of Palpatine for Count Dooku. And we get this classic scene of Palpatine trying to convince Anakin to kill Count Dooku. Like, do it. Do it, Anakin. The next scenes of this movie are basically Anakin having nightmares of Padme by die. And on top of it all, the Jedi Council doesn't even grab my mind so I'll rank a master because, oh, I don't know, they didn't feel like it. Like, the dude is literally the chosen one, and Jedi actually spit in his face and didn't even value, didn't even, don't even value him. Like, bro, why? It's all works in Palpatine's favor, who if you don't know is indeed a Sith Lord. Palpatine then goes on to tell of Anakin that the dark plague is the wise. The evil Sith Lord who was killed by his apprentice, which by the way is Palpatine's whole time, according to lore. And Palpatine manipulates Anakin Palpatine, Palpatine manipulates Anakin, saying the dark side can save Padme, even create life. And the way so the Jedi of it deduce that Palpatine is an evil Sith Lord and arrests him in the most hypocritical Jedi way possible. So Palpatine and Blue and Slars free at the Jedi for lore reasons, and the Anakin walk scene seeing Mace Windu Freddy, Palp Freddy Palpatine, making him look like the bad guy, which he is not. And of course, Anakin chose to save Padme, so he fully embraces the dark side and helps Palpatine kill Mace Windu. And after this whole fight, we get must be one of the best sequences of Star Wars. Order 66. Oh man, all those Jedi never saw it coming, huh? But if you don't know, Order 66 basically a command that causes all Jedi, causes all clones to straight up just unalive the Jedi no matter the cost. The scene showing this is actually so done well, and it's so sad yet all these society to see the Jedi fall like this. Man, those younglings never get old, am I right? <laughs> so, after this, so, so after arriving on a planet called Mustafar, Padme tries to plead with Anakin who's evil now, by the way, and makes Padme choke on her aspirations. But then Obi-Wan shows him that to set all the differences with the greatest lightsaber fight ever. Greatest lightsaber fight ever. Man, not only is his lightsaber fight, lightsaber battle not, has the best choreography, it's in the whole of Star Wars, it's got some best soundtrack to it. Praise be John Williams. After a total of 9 minutes of fighting, Obi-Wan eventually slices and dices and with his high ground assists. Before Palpatine shows me and put him in his classic Vader suit. Also, Padme dies while giving giving birth to Luke and Leia, and just like that, Star Wars had officially become Force Circle. Now, obviously, this is one of the best Star Wars movies in my opinion. Just the first half of it, and it's so perfect, man. I just love about this movie because it's so rich in the story and accomplished what the prequel is supposed to accomplish in the first place. That being it, me telling the strategic tragedy of Anakin Skywalker. This is still a very tangible movie in a Star Wars whole. So it all. it's very dark and very violent at the same time. Overall, was Revenge of the Sith a good movie? Well, kind of. But it was like a good Star Wars movie. Yes. S tier.
Rogue One was actually kind of a good movie. This is the only Star Wars movie that actually managed to take itself seriously and has a completely different vibe for the others. Whereas most Star Wars movies revolve around the funny lightsaber fight, this one revolves around many horrors that beat in the war. I just made it feel maybe more historical. Yeah, this movie's pretty dark, man. Literally every single character sort of dies in the end. So the movie starts on this planet where this guy called the director recruits his entire guy to blow him a Death Star. At gunpoint. And when he refuses, he kills his wife, feeding his daughter Jen Erso to hide out and eventually get rescued by the rebels. After 15 years, he after 15 years, Jen's father reveals he created the flaw in the Death Star so massive that one explosion reacted fire into it, and it's enough to destroy the whole thing. And I gotta admit, there was a pretty clever way of explaining how the Death Star was destroyed e easily in the new hole. So the director finds that Jen Sat was sending transmissions to the rebels. So the so he basically kills an entire team of rebels before the rebels attack. In killing him in explosion. This movie is just hilarious. See what the director meeting with Darth Vader himself to try to explain why the base was attacked. And this, of course, ends with the greatest line spoken in Star Wars history. Now, I'm not going to be showing the clip. I just want you to see it for yourself. So now, with a whole bunch of stealing the Death Star stuff from our planet, order to find a weak spot, Jen Jen leads uh, the Jen leads his underscore 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 squad back into Skyrim. We got this blind guy with John with floor and this robot guy. This guy I don't know the name of. This guy I also know the name of. I cast him for Andor. Yeah, this movie did not. Yeah, movie did not get to know all I mean these main characters. And still, this rebels line that has this massive war. And I will admit, it's really cool. Just the way the empires portrayed make makes movies so grand compared to the rebels. It honestly makes makes it good for a pretty pretty makes it good for a pretty good makes it for a good final battle. And since the movie came out, since it came out in, in 47 years ago, they didn't really need many extra characters. So they just kill them off each one by one. And if, and if only they actually developed these guys a bit further, I might have cared, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. Death Star blows and that started with a skyrippin' give me an emotional scene where Jen and Cassian just stare out in their real death. Now, listen, let's talk about my favorite part of the movie. I'm gonna be show my favorite part of the movie. I'm gonna be showing a clip of the movie's ending and hoping it doesn't get copyrights and explain why it's my favorite part. Let's play the clip. I'm just kidding guys, I'm not gonna show the clip because um I don't like the copyright strikes. But if you see the movie Solo, a Star Wars story. Solo is a good movie. Honestly, I never really hire host for a Star Wars for a standalone solo film, but watching this, it felt pretty good. So the movie takes place about 10 years before A New Hope, where we see young Han Solo trying to make himself, or trying to make himself, Charles, trying to make himself as a pilot. But then he gets arrested by this guy called Becca, and he gets the guy in the Wookiee pit. Well, we also meet the one and only Chewbacca, and how pretty much convinces the Chewie to let him escape when they both had to join Beckett in their gang. And then together they rob a train, which fails, causing a bunch of people to die. So to avoid being killed by the boss guy, they, they, they do another score to settle their death. This is where we meet Lando Calrissian, also the Millennium Falcon. And then they do this mission where a free bunch of slaves, and they get the, the money back to repay the boss guy. But then Han Solo gets betrayed by Beckett. Who could have seen this coming? Yeah, it's kind of predictable to be honest. Anyway, in the end, anyway, in the end, Solo kills Be Solo kills Beckett, and we also get this random Darth Maul cameo, which is kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. Also, Han Solo wins Millennium Falcon and gave him space poker. So yeah, Solo was a great movie in my opinion. There's a great backstory to Han Solo. It's kind of a shame though that this movie was the least performing Star Wars movie. This was a break from uh, Jedi, Sith, and Overtime Force series. It was a fun and clean heist movie. So for that. A tier. Star Wars The Force Awakens. Well, we made it to the final trilogy. Honestly, I like the final trilogy more than the prequel trilogy. Honestly. So first up is The Force Awakens. So the movie starts with a village being brutally murdered by Gold of Flames. The first one is back. There's a new emo stuff on the block and Luke Skywalker is missing. Also, the smoothest bloke called Snoke. We first get to introduce the stormtrooper guy called Finn who basically goes rogue and tries to escape the Force Order. Order, along with a pilot called Poe Dameron. There's also there's also the sign woman called Ray who owns the orange troll called BB-8. Who apparently who apparently who I mean who carries them out to Luke Skywalker. Then meets Ray and Jack Goon and they get chased before it's eventually escaping in the Millennium Falcon. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm not even going to lie. Seeing the scene, maybe have I realized I will miss the Falcon man. And that Falcon was a soldier and us, we get the Han Solo and Chewbacca. Well, unfortunately, it's revealed that Han Solo was pretty much back to a, back to a smuggler. So it's sort of 
So, sort of threw his care development out the door. Anyway, so Ray saw he's a young leaser and I found him, but I get captured by the first order search for BB 8. But then Ray escapes in the Jedi mind tricks and the resistance arrives from the Death Star base and Han confronts Kylo Ren, who is also his son, by the way. And Kylo Ren just kills him. Man, these father son reusing never get never end well in these movies. Tell me about it. Anyways, this scene is, and this is where we get the final showdown. Showdown between Kylo Ren and Finn, who gets absolutely destroyed within seconds. But then Ray shows up, he says, The forward, now it's her time to do a Kylo. And t Kylo Ren, the absolute unit, who was a Jedi turned warlord since transferred by the Luke Skywalker. The Luke Skywalker! Somehow, somehow, sells his fight. I have no words. So yeah, this movie ends with a cliffhanger with Ray finding Luke and giving his father's lightsaber. The end. Honestly, The Force Awakens was good, but compared to The Revenge of the Sith, I think it's still a little bit better. B tier. Star Wars The Last Jedi, The Last Jedi. Honestly, when, it's complete, when it came out, it completely split the fan base. And while I'm in, there's a non compatible scene from there. It was so awesome. Let's start off with the plot. So the movie picks up where we left off with the Force Awakens with, with the Rebels and the, fir and the first Force Awakens with the Rebels and the First Order still at war with each other. Also, Finn surprisingly see no entries that they're literally being sliced open to Force Awakens. Man, this thing really nerfs these like lightsabers, huh? Huh? Hard, huh? Fast forward a bit, and we're back to Rey heading. Heading Luke's father's lightsaber, which had Luke's little response by throwing the lightsaber like it was nothing. Yeah, somehow there's a tale of trip climbing into the last movie now to turn to a family guy funny mode for the sake of quote unquote subverting expectations. This is the most out of character thing I ever seen in a Star Wars movie do. Luke then refuses to Luke, hmm. Luke then refuses to help Ray in the resistance. As he just and he's sort of just given up on the ideas of Jed as a whole, but he visited Kipis and I was convinced to help Ray through the power and nostalgia. And, and also, Ray flies out of the spaceship, but then Ray gets back using the Force, and I like this scene. It's kind of cool. Luke eventually reveals that he felt. Luke eventually reveals to that he felt. 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 Felt evil in Kylo, who was who was once a student of him, and almost killed him, but hesitated. Caused the Kylo Lens to miss in return in the scene, and in turn burned out the entire Jedi, Trep, die, entire Jedi Temple. Wow. That is quite dark. Honestly, I really like like the ideas in the scene. The ideas in the scene, and it makes pretty good backstory. This also see where it answer answer a lot of questions we have episode seven. We also have the side plot. Where, we also have the side plot. Where, we also have the side plot where also a fan of this girl named Rose who trying to who trying to find us trying to track her some other Force Order. But anyways, plot. I mean, plot how about the rage just falling towers to the writers and. I just saw the color right trying to convince him back to the light side. Like how Luke did in episode 6. This leads to kill. This leads to color and killing Snoke, but they're refusing to actually join the light side. This gets interrupted with a rebel we will hold, though. Just decides to light speed ram and destroy everything. I mean, it looks pretty cool, right? So, the so most of the rebels being dead, the remaining rebels make them planning a crate, where they all made a last stand against the first order. But then Luke Skywalker sh somehow sh shows up. Somehow appears and stalls for the rebels to escape. 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 Kylo goes down and fights Luke in a saber combo. This reveals this was a force protection that real Luke was never there in the first place. Luke dies and the end. One of the last Jedi somehow promised it was a proof of the Force Awakens. So yeah, this movie gets A tier. Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Sith. There's just something about Star Wars, but it hates the final movie of the trilogy and creates a cinematic masterpiece. Voila! The Rise of Skywalker. So I can't tell about them. So remember how Palpatine falls on explodes in Return of the Jedi? Well, I don't know how I can tell this, but somehow Palpatine returned. So this movie rolls around Rey, Finn, Poe, and Chewie trying to find Palpatine so he can kill him. They arrive on this. They arrive on Possible, a desert planet, where we recently forced Kylo Ren snatches Ray Snackers and immediately finding out where she is. And the only thing how Kylo Ren can do that is because the dark side can do that for some reason. Dark side can do that. Eh, I have no flaws. It's good. But then, but then Lando Carrizan appears on nowhere and helping the main crew. But then, Chewie, Chewie gets captured by the Empire and Kylo Ren rolls out. Ray right does his backflip, causing Kylo Ren to die. But then he locks it off, and then Ray accidentally uses the force, killing Chewbacca. And if you're wondering how 
how Ray, everyone knowing how Ray has force lightning, well, it's because he's raised in poverty. And for some reason, Chewbacca has lied after surviving two explosions. One in The Force Awakens, and one in this movie. Chewbacca should be dead by now. Why is he still like- So again, so again, heads back to Kylo Ren's ship to rescue Chewie. This is- This is where Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren sort of talked and have a skit to do with the Force. Again, that's- Again, that's how the Force works. The Dark Side can do that. The Dark Side can do that. Trust me. Kylo Ren eventually gets to the ship and reveals that Rey is Palpatine's granddaughter. So Rey- So Rey- So then Rey escapes and- With the Falcon traveling to the record to the Death Star. Where they- where then she finds Kylo Ren and have another lifesaver fight. But then Rey, but then Leia uses the uses the force to teleport for, force to teleport for Gadai, distracting Kylo Ren, leaving Rey open to stab him. But then we learn that Rey has the power to heal someone using the force and heal Kylo Ren. And the scene, and the scene following this is pretty good. If it just hand coming in and convincing Kylo to turn to the light, the dialogue here is great overall. As we. As we continue, Ray holds over the ring of your grandfather as the rebels make their last stand. Ben also arrives, and now a good guy, and both of the combined lightsabers, Ray eventually kills Palpatine. Lando also somehow gets like a billion rebel ships to join the war because, I don't know, plot, I guess. And through this, they win the war. Also, also Ray da Ray also dies, but then Ben sacrifices himself and force heals here. And not to mention the fact that in the middle of the fight, Every single Jedi has been killed past, including Yoda, Obi Wan, even Mace Windu for crying out loud. It tells Ray to kill Palpatine, and Ma and and also the God tier recap of all the plans for the Phil trilogy comes back to rec to recap Phil trilogy all comes back. To just watching between my eye, between my eye, my eye. And after this, Ray rides had to win and goes to Luke's home for a new hope and the end. Honestly, I like this movie. It was perfect. I love how Manchester recap all the memories we watched over the years. One last part, one last gift, one last movie to end up the Star Wars saga trilogy. Can you just believe that? To end the Star Wars saga that is today. So yeah, it's only fitting. This movie gets S tier. God tier. Well, we've made it to the final part of the video. This is finally done now. I know it has been taking a while, but I never used like I discover like I I I edited this video with Clipchamp. I I did not discover Clipchamp until I made like doing a tricky treat levels. You know what I mean? Yeah, I made those videos. Uh, like Halloween month. Okay, yes, and um, I had a lot of time doing this, so I'm just gonna have to take a break from YouTube before I get to upload it again, like a day off or something, and then I'll come back to upload it again. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. The fine, that is it. Did that, that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Ranking every Star Wars movie video. Is complete. Now I'm gonna go take a break of you for today because I waste so much time on this. Bye everyone. Have a day.